Hello. Welcome to Postcolonial Space. I'm Masood Raja. And this is a quick video in response to one of the queries that someone had posted in the comments about in-betweenness. So I'm not going to go into the complicated details of how Homi Baba theorizes it. Right? I highly recommend you read Location of the Culture to see how he theorizes the concepts of in-betweenness, interstitial gap, and the third space of enunciation. But I'm just going to give you a rough idea of my understanding of in-betweenness. And to understand it clearly, you'll have to go back to Saussurean linguistics, right? If you remember how Saussure defines the sign, there is a signifier and a signified, right? They are two sides of one, let's say, sheet of paper, which constitutes the sign, right? Signifier is the acoustic sound that you make or what you scribble on a piece of paper. The signified is the concept that forms in your mind, right? And that is the signifier-signified relation. Sometimes there is a referent in the real world, like tree has an actual thing that we refer to. But most of the times we stay with the signifier and the signified. Now, as Saussure further explains his dealing with language itself, you know, I have lectures on it, you can watch it. But another thing that he, he mentions is that language works through a binary structure, right? So the sign, we know it because it doesn't have substantial meaning. It has differential meanings. We know a sign because of its differences from the other signs. So in that sense, then, the sign has a binary structure, right? Just as signifier and signified are two elements that form the sign, similarly, the signs itself have a binary structure, good, bad, white, black, civilized, uncivilized, right? And we tend to look at the world linguistically in a binary structured way, ours, theirs, past, present, colonizers, colonized. These are all binary ways of looking at the world. Now, in-betweenness as a positioning, scholarly or individual, is when you're neither this nor that. You're not aligning yourself with this side of the binary, let's say, civilized, nor you're aligning yourself with this side of the binary, which is uncivilized. You're somewhere in between. Right? And that for Baba and a lot of others is the most productive space to speak from within, from in between the binary structure, so that you're neither determined by this nor determined by that. And you develop a voice, a writing that is informed by both. That is being in between. Now, you're not like ideally in between. You can't draw a map and say, here is the ideal in between. Anytime you complicate the binary poles of the sign system, right? If you are a nativist and you believe that we can only define the post colonial nation state and develop it by retrieving our past histories and by jettisoning all Western novel, then you're on that side of the binary, right? Similarly, on the other side, if you are a European or American and think only the American way is right and everything is wrong, you are then on that side of the binary. So binaries are always hard positions, right? And they don't take into account the difference. They are structured by excluding their others or diminishing their others. So in betweenness then is a space where you're neither this nor that. I mean, that's what literally it means. But where you're playing with both sides of the binary, you create a new sign, which is interstitial, which is in between both the signs. So if you look at the gender binary, we have traditionally thought of man and woman. That is the binaristic structure of the gender. But when we enter trans identity in it, people who are either transsexual 
are transitioning into from one gender identity to another, then you are in the in-between space because you're neither this nor that. That doesn't mean you are less or more, but in most of the cases, if you are in the in-between space, you become more powerful than the binaristic sign itself because you can draw on both. So in post-colonial scholarship, how would you mobilize this? How would you use it is, you know, by challenging the metropolitan assumptions, by challenging the colonial assumptions, but at the same time not becoming a nativist, not becoming a purist, right? So if you live in Pakistan, I mean, look around. Who is developing binary structures within the nations? What are those binary structures? Men, women, right? Muslim, non-Muslim. And when you want to place yourself in between, you say, okay, I agree with this, but I could also use a few thoughts from over there, from Marx and others. And that's an in-between position. It doesn't take a hard, clearly streamlined, binaristic view of social and political identity. Now, is it a practical politics or scholarship? I mean, think of it, if you live in a world in which people want concrete answers and specific definitions, to be in between is kind of being in an ambivalent space, right? And when you are ambivalent, most of the times it will come across as not concrete, not a strong enough stance. Most of the time people want total commitments, total stances, right? And that is why those kind of politics are destructive and they become totalitarian. In-betweenness, on the other hand, allows you to play with both ends of the sign. And it also allows you to create new modalities, new praxis, right? And it leaves you open to further changes because the more knowledge you, that comes in, the more you play with the binary structure, the more productive you can be. Now, Baba clearly discusses this in the location of culture, but where it becomes really clear, where he merges the concept with his concept of hybridity is in his chapter on the postmodern and the postcolonial. Because for Baba, the postcolonial scholar is the most productive scholar, not because they are committed to you know, repudiation of colonial heritage and all, but because their work is hybrid, because they have no problem in adopting knowledges from their own cultures and infusing it with the metropolitan cultures. So what they produce then is a hybrid form of art, hybrid form of literature, and that's what the world needs. That's where the world is headed. So if you have problem in asserting an in-between position, think of it this way, practically. If you look at the world right now and ask yourself, who are the people who are unleashing the most destructive kind of politics in the world? Politics that wants to eliminate certain groups, supplant them and replace them with other, right? Politics that tolerates no difference wants unified identities. So you will find out that wherever you go in the world, it's the deeply conservative right-wing groups, right, that either want to impose one religion or one ethnic identity or one kind of economic system or one kind of politics. They also tend to be purists. They want to retrieve a pure history of their particular culture, their particular identity, and their politics tends to be destructive, right, and exclusionary. So overall, I understand this is not a highly sophisticated explanation of the concept, but just keep in mind, in-betweenness is with reference to the sign and its binary structure. You can take it, make it larger and think of the binary structures of cultures and where you speak from as an enunciating, an enunciating subject, if you are speaking from an ambivalent space, from a space 
where you're drawing on both ends of the binary but not necessarily committing to each one of them uncritically, then your work is coming from an in-between space. That is what, according to my understanding, is in-betweenness. That's all. I hope this was useful to you and one of uh, our subscribers had requested it. I hope this is useful to you as well. But I highly recommend that you all should read The Location of Culture. And my apologies, I have not recorded anything on The Location of Culture or Homi Baba. And my reason is that I need to have time to read him more carefully so that I can do justice to his work. That's all. I hope you're staying safe and taking care of each other. Please continue to do so. Stay generous, be kind, and as always, I will now see you next time. Until then, peace and love.